was actually Compton scattering result. So measuring the shift in a change of the wavelength, this was easy, right? It was both of light. And this was a funny quantity. I will show you how the, you can derive this. And I'm going to propose you a slightly more complicated derivation than you do as a whole of Now, let's look at on just dimensional grounds what this quantity is. And E is a mass, C is the speed. So what is this quantity physically? It's a momentum, right? So this kind of looks like as H divided by the momentum. And that has the somehow plays the role of the length. The reason I'm bringing that up is because this realization that this combination, and this was Planck's constant. The realization that this kind of expression um, has a dimension of length led directly to the assumption slightly later by Louis de Broglie that we could think of electron as an object which has a wavelength. This being the wavelength of the electron. This being actually the wavelength of the electron in the extreme case of the Compton's effect. So let me actually show you how this comes about. Now, you know anything about special relativity? Yes. Huh? You do. You know anything about four vectors? The reason I want to use four vectors because that's a simple calculation. I always mess up the element. So using direct, how, how are we doing on filming? Good. particle has experiencing no forces. That particle has energy, which is mc squared divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared, right? And momentum of this particle is p, which is mv over 1 minus v squared over c squared. And it is customary to define for momentum P V P over C and P. So in other words, an object which has this should be a vector. An object which has four components in such a way that P squared is minus m squared c squared if I'm not The reason why we define it like this relationship here is because this is invariant under Lorentz transformation, so it's all it's in all reference points. And from here this is minus e squared over c squared plus p squared. You can actually check this relationship here easily with these definitions. This minus sign here or not depends on your choice of space-time metric, which in my case is eta mu nu My space time interval is delta 
S squared is minus C squared delta P squared plus A. This is my notation. So with this, if I take E squared, this will give me M squared, C squared, C to the fourth. I'm dividing it by C squared, and then I have 1 minus B squared over C squared, right? And I put a minus sign in front with this one. And square of the P is M squared, B squared over 1 minus B squared over C squared. So I have 1 minus b squared over c squared in the denominator of the both terms. And then I have minus m squared c squared plus m squared b squared. So if I factor out minus m squared c squared, I end up with 1 minus b squared over c squared in the denominator. and uh, 1 minus b squared over c squared in the numerator, so this is minus m squared c squared. So I have a consistent notation. Ultimately, this relationship can also be written as energy is equal to p squared c squared plus m squared c to the fourth. You can check that this is true. Now, this is the easiest framework that we should describe a uh, Compton effect. So Compton effect is described by a diagram. And we take initially electron, sorry, photon or light which has four momentum, which we'll call P gamma, will have energy of the light divided by C, momentum of the light. And initially, electron is at rest. So it will just have mc squared over c squared. That's an electron at rest. After the scattering, this is the scattering location, you have electron moving and it has four momentum P prime and we have a scattered photon which has four momentum P prime gamma. And so P prime gamma we will write as E prime gamma over C P prime gamma. And this will be the electron which will have energy E electron after the scattering over C P electron after the scattering sun prime. Both energy and momentum are conserved, which in terms of four vectors means that four vector of the photon before the, or the light before the scattering plus the four vector of the electron before the scattering is the sum of both quantities after the scattering. So this is the combination of energy and momentum conservation laws. And we will make an assumption that energy of the photon before the scattering is H2 and energy of the photon after the scattering is H nu bar. If 
if you use the relationship between the frequency and the wavelengths, you can write that this is hc over lambda, and this is hc over lambda prime. So you can directly relate the wavelengths of the photon before and after the scattering to the wavelengths. So this relationship here contains the information about the wavelengths of the photon. And the idea is to use this relationship here to measure it, or to calculate and then compare it measure. And this was easy. And relativity provides you with a simple way of doing it. And you could write actually energy and momentum conservation laws separately, and as long as you would treat them um, as relativistic quantities, you would get the same result. But here I can actually use some little magic to get this a lot faster. Um, so to get the result in a nice form, I'm going to move this term to that side of the equation. So I'm going to have p gamma minus p gamma prime plus p e is p prime e. So I have rewritten this conservation law by moving this or momentum of the scattered light to the left hand side. Now the reason is because these are unfortunate quantities which I don't care to know or don't care to know too much. And in terms of the scattering, this angle is directly related to this angle. So it doesn't really matter which one you use. So if I square this relationship here, what do I have? The square of this is minus mass of the electron c squared, right? Square of four vector is always this. Now, on this side, this is a square of a, it's a plus b plus c squared, which is a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab plus 2ac plus 2bc, right? Remember that? Then you can work it out. This is easy. You just lump a plus b together to it once and then with one by time. So square of the photon would give you mass of the photon, which is zero, right? Square of another photon, more form momentum, would give you a term which is proportional to the square of the mass of the photon, but it's zero. Now square of this term would produce minus m squared c squared. Correct? And then there are three pieces left. This one times this one, this one times this one, and this one times this one. So we'll actually write it like this. This one times these two. And then plus 2 times P gamma times its minus. So I have all the terms here, right? Then now the nice thing is that this cancels this and two drop, twos drop out. There is another nice feature because this is a product of the four vector of the electron before the scattering with the difference of these two. Now, photon before the scattering has no momentum, right? It's not moving. So this piece here is simply minus mc times 
energy of the photon before, after, before and after the scattering. If I didn't mess up, that's what it is. And minus, okay, I have to multiply this and this. Multiplying the two four vectors gives you minus E gamma E prime gamma over C squared plus P gamma dotted into P gamma prime. And that's equal to zero. These two minus sign don't matter. I have a mild, mild suspicion that I'm messing up again. formula then tells us, now, it helped me not make the mistake in uh, algebra. So I have m, which I will factor out. So I will have e gamma minus e prime gamma multiplied by m. And uh, I will move this piece to that other side of the equation. So this will give me 1 over m, e gamma, e prime gamma, right? And then this piece with p's will have minus p gamma dotted into p prime gamma. Did I do my algebra right? C squared. Huh? C squared? E e yeah. C squared. Now, this here is the magnitude of P gamma. This is magnitude of P gamma prime times the cosine of the angle between them. This is the scattered. So the cosine of the angle between them is this angle here, right? So this is the angle we will call theta. This is incoming photon. This is a scattered photon. The angle between them is this angle here. So that's the scattering angle. And for photons, momentum is E over C. magnitude of the momentum that comes from E is P squared, C squared plus M squared, C to the force. For light, there is no mass, so then the square root drops, and so you have that the momentum is simply energy divided by C. So we have E gamma minus E prime gamma is 1 over m c squared and then we have e gamma e gamma prime and 1 minus cosine theta right because when I replace these magnitudes here by e over c I get E gamma times E prime gamma, and there is a cosine theta, and there is 1 over C squared, which is common. 
So that's what you get. 